Hi guys, well, how y'all doing? Welcome to another episode of Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Barenfeld. I'm Brandon Barenfeld. Thank you for joining me today. This is episode 110 of Hockey on the Spot. Um, well, the Olympics are officially over. The Sochi Olympics of 2014 have officially come to a close. Um, congratulations to Team Canada on their second straight gold medal. Um, they had defeated Sweden in the gold medal game by a final score of three to nothing. Uh, Jonathan Taves being this year's gold medal goal game winning goal scorer. Uh, Sidney Crosby and Chris Kunitz would score the other two goals of the game. Um, um, all, but also congratulations to Sweden for getting that far and winning the silver medal. And then also congratulations to Team Finland for winning the bronze medal. They defeated the, the United States in the bronze medal game, um, just absolutely destroying them by a final score of 5 to nothing. Teemu Solani being the game MVP, scoring two goals in the game. Um, Teemu Solani would also be named the tournament's best Player, the MVP of the whole tournament, um, while Phil Kessel would be named the best forward, Eric Carlson would be named the best defenseman, and Carey Price would be named the best goaltender. And last but not least, on the all-tournament all-star team, we would have Henrik Lundqvist in goal, Drew Doughty and Eric Carlson on defense, and then Phil Kessel, Teemu Solani, and Michael Granlund up front as the starting lineup. Um, that's Those were the players qualified for that starting lineup. And so we put, so with that being said, Sochi comes to a close. And we now get back to some good old NHL action. No games last night. Um, how the games will begin t again tonight. Only one game tonight, however, um, and it will be a makeup game that was postponed initially between the Carolina Hurricanes and the Buffalo Sabres in Buffalo. <laughs> and with the NHL coming back, <laughs> we have a few injuries to talk about to, that carried over from the Olympics, as well as. Um, some the tr trade deadline coming up. Um, we're gonna have a lot of talks about that as well. Um, so the trade freeze officially ended at 11:59 p.m. Eastern Time or midnight um, on January, uh, uh, excuse me, February 23rd into the 24th. Um, um, Oh yes, and one thing I did forget to mention is that um, after Canada's gold medal win, Steve Eiserman has st decided to step down as GM, and he believes that it is time to let someone else get a shot at it. So, um, the big question now is who will be the general manager of the 2018 team in South Korea? We definitely have four years to figure that out. However, in six, in about six months, we will find out if NHL players will even be allowed to go. And at this point, my personal honest opinion is that that will not be the case. So many injuries occurred in this tournament, like Thomas Kopetsky for Slovakia, uh, Alexander Barkov for Finland, um, big, both big losses for the Florida Panthers. Um, there are only two r representatives in the Olympics. <laughs> um, there's just so many players, the list is so long that it's just hard to remember everybody. Um, <coughs> Paul Martin for the United States, Matt Zuccarello he, um, for Norway, he will be out for three to four weeks. That is a humongous loss for the New York Rangers. Um, he has been their best player and most consistent player all year long. Um, and so filling that gap is going to be nearly impossible. Zuccarello has just taken his game up to a whole new level this year. <coughs> um, <clears throat> but the Rangers, however, may also be without Mark Stahl 
as he appears to be having problems with back spasms. So a couple of losses for the New York Rangers. Um, <laughs> Henrik Zetterberg will be missing for Team Sweden. What what um, suffered an injury for Team Sweden in the very first game? That was a big loss for Sweden. Um, that is, but an even bigger loss for the Detroit Red Wings. He could be done for nearly the entire rest of the year. Um, he does hope to make a return this year. I believe the potential time could be eight weeks. So, it's if he does come back, it it might not be in, until the playoffs, and that's assuming the Red Wings even make it to the playoffs. Um, <coughs> but just so many injuries and big, you know, there's the, so many injuries um, in the tournament, even players who really don't matter too much. Um, we're injured. F oh, Fedor Tutin for Russia. Uh, in the Columbus Blue Jackets, um, it's basically been said that um, Fedor Tutin will not be returning to the Blue Jackets for the rest of the regular season. He will only return if the Blue Jackets make the playoffs, pretty much. But yes, um, so but Fedor Tutin, Matt Zuccarello, Thomas Kopetsky, Alexander Barkov, Paul Martin, Henrik Zetterberg. Um, those are so, those are pretty much all the major injuries, but the biggest one of all, the biggest injury of all for for so in Sochi came off of Team Canada. John Tavares, who had suffered an injury in the Latvia game, a, a knee injury, will not return for the remainder of the season, which pretty much ends any hopes of a playoff push for the New York Islanders. Um, and so that great top line of theirs, John Tavares, Kyle Oposo, and Thomas Vanek, gets split up earlier than expected. Um, it's inevitable that Thomas Vanek's going to be traded, but but uh, now losing Tavares, that's going to be a huge blow for the Islanders, being without their top star. Um, they are already without Franz Nielsen, who has had a career year for them. Um... So two significant losses already for the Islanders this year. Um, so just lots and lots of injuries going on. We had a few waiver claims as well, a waiver placements as well. Oh, while the tournament was going on, um, the Chicago Blackhawks would place defenseman Michael Koska on waivers. He went on to be claimed by the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, Mike Motto would be placed on waivers by the Florida Panthers, and Rico Hellenius would be placed on waivers by the Tampa Bay Lightning on $125 on, of unconditional waivers, presum presuming, presumably for purposes of mutual contract termination. He has been a huge draft bust for the Tampa Bay Lightning, but again, the Lightning claim Michael Koska off waivers from the Blackhawks, um, that has been the only change thus far. Um, that has been the only change thus far. The San Jose Sharks recently have placed 32-year-old uh, Bracken Cairns on waivers. Um, and the, one of the bigger news of, of la yesterday, um, all-time Colorado Avalanche forward and former captain Milan Hayduk has officially announced his retirement from the National Hockey League. Um, he had said that if a team did not sign him by by a certain point that he would retire from the NHL, he was looking to get signed, but nobody showed interest. And it's and it's really a shame because I do feel like a team, a couple of teams, would, could have really used his services. And I feel like maybe a team like the Washington Capitals could have really used his services the most, um, just to have that veteran presence in their lineup, um, a guy who's been a scorer in the, in the league for a long time. <coughs> um, so yeah, I, I just feel like it's gonna um, the will be a big mistake that a lot of teams didn't really sign him, and he may not be the player he used to be, obviously. 
from Elon Hayduke, a former Rocket Richard Trophy winner when he led the NHL with 50 goals in 2002-2003. That was his only 50-goal season. But what a great player he was when he was in his prime. Um, so, yep. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, teams will learn. Teams will learn. And we do have something else to look forward to in a few days. March 1st is coming up, folks, which means the final stadium series game will be played at Soldier Field between the Chicago Blackhawks and Hawks and the Pittsburgh Penguins. The Hawks will be the home team, and for the Penguins, this will be their third outdoor game experience. Um, and then we also have the Heritage Classic coming up between the Vancouver Canucks and the Ottawa Senators in Vancouver. Um, so we're not even done with special events, even with Sochi coming to an end. Um, so, now with all that talk out of the way, let's quickly go over some some trade rumors that are going on that are going down. Already trade rumors continue. We'll start with the New York Rangers as trade rumors continue to revolve around um, defenseman Dan Girardi and forward and captain Ryan Callahan. It seems like Glenn Sather is really intent on letting them go if they're not, not going to get signed. Um, I don't know what to think about this. I feel like, you know, you know, I can see where Sather's coming from. He doesn't want to let them go for nothing. Cut nothing. And you definitely want to build pieces on your team, but at the same time, you know, it's like these guys, you know, they're valuable assets on the team. Girardi is a shot blocking machine. Girardi has pretty much found his game in the recent stages of the year. Callahan, he did not have a single goal in the tournament in in the Sochi tournament. Um, and you know who who knows that how that'll translate. Um, but you know it's definite. It's pretty much. It's pretty. You know, definite that pretty possible that these next few games could be his final games in a New York Rangers uniform. Same for Girardi, um, and there are definitely teams interested in these guys. Um, lots of rumors about teams like the Anaheim Ducks being interested in Dan Girardi. Edmonton Oilers, I believe, were also on that list. A couple of teams looking for a shutdown defenseman. And as for Cali, the recent rumors is that. Uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning have been interested in him and that they'd be willing to give up Marty San Luis for Ryan Callahan. And to talk about that, San Luis, prior to the Sochi tournament, went up to general manager Steve Eiserman and at, told him that he would like to explore the option of being traded. He has a no-trade clause going into next year. Um, but at 38 years of age, we all know that San Luis can still bust down doors with his excellent hand-eye coordination, skating ability, and a, just a pure knack for the net. Um, San Luis, um, just an absolutely tremendous hockey player. Um, and even at 38 years of age, he definitely would be a valuable asset to any team looking for a score. Um, in the lockout shortened year, he led the season, he led the lockout shortened season with 60 points. Um, his teammate Steven Stamkos finished just three points behind him for second. Um, and the Lightning failed to make the playoffs, obviously. But with that being said, you know, it'll definitely be interesting. Also, again, teams like the St. Louis Blues and the Columbus Blue Jackets have also shown interest in Cali. Um, but those two definitely asking for way more money than they're worth. So at this point, it really doesn't surprise me if they get traded. Um, as far as San Luis goes, you know, again, the Rangers. That I feel like the Rangers would be an excellent fit for San Luis in addition to um, <laughs> some of the other teams that are interested in him. Pretty much the majority of the NHL, almost every NHL team is pretty much interested in this guy. He is going to be a top target for sure at the trade deadline. 
Um, Thomas Vanek will probably be the top target. Um, the New York Islander, it's pretty much inevitable that the New York Islanders are going to be trading him. It'll be the second time this season that Vanek will be traded. I can't remember the last time a top player in the NHL got traded twice in a season. <clears throat> but <clears throat> I'm sure this will be a rare situation where the Islanders, you know, now losing Tavares, pretty much have no reason left F to fight, except maybe lose on purpose and get a... Well, actually, that's not true. Um, the, and that, the, what's even worse for them, the more and more they lose, the higher pick the Buffalo Sabres will get. We could be talking the top two picks in the draft for the Buffalo Sabres, potentially. Um, obviously, it all depends on the lottery, but we'll see. It's going to be a very interesting, a very interesting draft lottery for sure. Um... When it comes to when the time comes, um, another player now other players that could be moved. Andre Markov could definitely be moved. moved. Um, the Canadians offered him a one-year contract worth six million dollars, but he's looking for a multi-year deal. He's looking for about three years, but they don't want to go that high. Markov's not getting any younger, so. I, it's not being thrown out that he's going to be traded, but in my opinion, it's definitely possible. Um, I don't think he will. I think he'll stay with the Canadians, especially considering they're making a playoff push and they're going to need him for that. Um, they're in the uh, playoff position as we speak. So we'll see. It's going to be interesting. Again, and then, of course, for Thomas Vanek, the asking price is believed to be a first and second round pick or top prospect. So, um, who needs offense, folks? Let's, we'll see. Next, let's talk about the Buffalo Sabres, Thomas Vanek's former team. Captain Steve Ott wants to stay in Buffalo, and he's yet to have contract talks with the new management, but... He is one of many players, including Ryan Miller and Matt Molson, that could be moved at any moment as the Sabres build for the future by acquiring top draft picks. Miller is continuing to be shopped while Molson, no, quote unquote, knows a trade is coming. Um, but Ryan Miller, he's definitely going to be another top trade deadline target for many teams. Um, he truly is. Um, he truly, truly is. Um, oh yeah, another Sochi injury just found out about, folks. Ryan Kessler of the Vancouver Canucks blocked a shot, slap shot for, by Ilya Kovalchuk in the K USA Russia game. He sustained it for the entire tournament. Um, Kellen Lane has been called up from the Uni Utica Comets, um, but he will have, he has, He's undergone an MRI, so we'll see how long he will be out if he is out at all. Um, but now going back to the top trade targets, as far as forwards and defensemen go, we'll talk. take a look at... We, we got the top 10 trade bait players in the NHL going into the March 5th trade deadline. Thomas Vanek of the New York Islanders at number one. Ryan Callahan of the New York Rangers at number two. Another New York Islander, Andrew McDonald, at number three. Andrew McDonald is being shopped, and a team like the Tampa Bay Lightning is most definitely interested. Um, but he'll be a valuable asset to any team. He is a shutdown defenseman who could also skate well, lug the puck up the ice very well, he can control the puck well. Um, so he'll be a good asset for a team that needs a shutdown defenseman. Uh, Steve Ott, number four. Marion Gabrick at number five. Only reason he isn't ranked higher is because of his injury problems that he's had all year long. He missed the tournament because of a broken collarbone. Um, he's still out with an injury, and there's no word on his return yet. But the Columbus Blue Jackets seem pretty content on letting Gabbert go. Even when he's been healthy, he really has not had the best season. He had an explosive start to the year, but after that, he just went on a slide. So, Gabrick really has not been the player that the Blue Jackets have bargained for. Um, he will become an unrestricted free agent at the end of the year, so we'll see what happens to him. 
Sam Gagne is number six on the list. Sam Gagne of the Edmonton Oilers. Um, he, um, they, he is definitely a guy who could be a valuable asset for any team. Um, so we'll see. So we'll see what happens with that one. He can be a valuable second line center, or even depth player, wherever you decide to put him. Uh, Matt Molson of the Buffalo Sabers at number seven, a sniper. Mike Camilleri at number eight. I'm kind of surprised he's not higher. Uh, lots of teams really looking at him, but no. But in particular, the L.A. Kings would definitely be interesting to see Camilleri go back to his old team. Um, it wouldn't surprise me at all. The Kings are in desperate need of offense, and Camilleri could definitely bring them that offense. Uh, Ryan Miller at number nine, um, and David of the Buffalo Sabers, and. David Legwand of the Nashville Predators at number 10. So with these players, um, you know you're going to get different things. With players like Thomas Vanek, marrying, with Thomas Vanek, you're going to get a, a, one of the best scorers in the league, though he had a rough tournament for Team Austria this year um, as their captain. <laughs> Thomas, Van Thomas Vanek, you're going to get a sniper and a guy who can – Make everything happen on the ice with Callahan. You're gonna, you're not gonna get a wow factor to his game. You're just gonna get a guy who plays with a lot of heart, a lot of soul, and a guy who, who will go out there, hit people, and go out there and hit people to make plays. But also in the defensive zone, a guy who will get down and block shots. He's one of the best shot blocking forwards in the game. Again, injuries is always a problem, and Callahan does have a history with injuries. So uh, we'll see what happens there. Andrew McDonald, again, a shutdown defenseman who can move the puck well, but a, one of the top shot-blocking defensemen in the league. So um, <coughs> um, will be interesting to see who, wh where Andrew McDonald the end, will, land, will end up, if he ends up anywhere. He's in a similar state. He's pretty much in a similar situation as Dan Girardi, who is not on the top of this list, but he's kind of an honorable mention for me, um, where he's asking, he wants to come back to the Islanders, but he is asking for way too much, and that, so the Islanders are in a situation where they're going to deal him. Uh, Steve Ott of the Buffalo Sabres, the captain, um, another captain on the trade block with Steve Ott. He is legitimately a grinder. He's all grit. But he does play the game with heart. So another one of those hard-working grinder players who could also put get you some goals. You know, he'll get you a goal. Or he'll get you some goals. Um, but he also is not afraid to drop the gloves. He'll be an excellent depth player for a team in need of a third-line center. Um, third-line centers are now getting more and more recognized throughout the day. Um, and so, you know, you can, more and more we realize now that we need third line centers on your team and legitimate ones because that th third lines are really the lines you rely on to be your best defensive line and so <coughs> to be the line that's going to provide you the defensive the, the defense and sometimes maybe even make some plays and put, put the puck in the net and D Steve Ott can definitely lead a charge to do so Marion Gabrick you know, when he's on his game, he's one of the best players in the league. When he's rolling, he's hot. And there and he'll be but he's definitely a gamble to take because his of his injury history, the injuries he's had all year long. This year, um, again a broken collarbone this year. Um, but he would definitely be a very valuable asset though for any team looking for a score and that is taking the gamble that he is going to go on a hot streak um the, taking the gamble that he is going to go on a hot streak um it would be very interesting to see who would want his services and honestly i honestly would personally say a team like the new york rangers should look into getting him back because you know i think he'd thrive a lot much a whole lot better under Elaine Vigneault's system than he did in John Tortorella's system. That's just my opinion. I don't think the Rangers will get try to go back for him, but we'll see what happens. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, Sam Gagne, you know, again, 
he this is a guy who has a lot of skill and a lot of talent hasn't exactly lived up to his draft status you know he was a top draft pick in 2007 he, you know um, the but really people forget that, that eight point night he had against the Chicago Blackhawks some odd years ago four goals four assists that was just a one time thing and people reflect on that and think that just because of that one moment he's a great player but that's his best moment ever you know that seems never done anything else since since that you know um, so you know Gagne but again he's got skill he has potential. He can be a second line center. He is not a top line center, that's for sure. If you're looking for top line centers, then Sam Gagne is out of the question. Um, he is a second line center at best, and that's really stretching it at this point. Um, in my personal opinion, he'd re he's really more suitable for a third line center role. But we'll see. It's going to be interesting to see. E. With Matt Molson, obviously, you get you're gonna get yourself a sniper, a guy who works hard, um, and and a guy who will get who, you know he's who's a legitimate 30, 30 goal scorer in this league, especially when he was playing with John Tavares. Um, you know, I personally believe that when he, the New York Islanders traded him, a lot of fans were devastated, even though they got Vanek. You know. Let's face it, folks, the Sabres definitely won that trade. Um, they, uh, the Islanders got rid of a draft pick that the Sabres now have in their possession. Um, I mean, it's to, in my personal opinion, with how deep the 2015 draft is going to be, um, they'll probably let the Sabres keep this pick. This 2014 draft, I don't think it's expected to be extremely deep, but we'll see. It's going to be def very interesting to see for sure. Um, but anyway, with that being said, yeah, Molson, with him, you'll get yourself a score um, for sure, a left winger, a guy who could play on the, the wing with any top players. And I think a team like the Anaheim, it would be interesting to see, see a team like the Anaheim Ducks go after him. Um, They've really been looking for somebody to play with Ryan Getzlaff and Corey Perry all year long. And every and we always believed that Dustin Penner was the guy. And for a long time this year, he pretty much was the guy. And at times, he still is the guy. But he's constantly, t consistently taken off the line for other players. And some, cause when it doesn't work, sometimes they need a player who's going to consistently play on that top line with Getzlaff and Perry and have great chemistry with them. You know, if Molson could have the kind of chemist that kind of chemistry with Tavares, what's to think that maybe he won't he would have it with any you know with that kind of chemistry with Tavares, then maybe he could have it with any top player in the league. But we'll see. Um I think you know, maybe a team like the Pittsburgh Penguins could also use his services, you know, maybe put him on the wing with Crosby. We'll see. Or or even Malkin. But, you know, the, 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 the bottom line is Pascal Dupuis is hurt, still out, and they need a, a guy, a forward who, who, uh, who plays a defensive style but could put up the puck in that once in a while, like a Steve Ott kind of guy. That would be a good fit for the Pens, that's for sure. Mike Camilleri of the Calgary Flames. Again, I mentioned it. That I think the kick, the, uh, with him, you'll get yourself a sniper but a guy who could also make plays. He is a scorer, and he would be perfect for a team that needs a score. Again, he's another guy that the Anaheim Ducks could look at. However, I'd say a team like the LA Kings would probably be the most likely destination for Mike Camilleri. Um, they have shown the most interest in him of anybody. He it played for the Kings previously in his career. He began his career with the LA Kings. Um, and he was a popular player in L.A. So, uh, but the long story short, the L.A. Kings they have gone through an going into Sochi. They have been going through an offensive slump. They need offense. They need a guy who can score, and Mike Camilleri can do just that. He can put the puck in the net. They're going to need him. Ryan Miller, um, the goal, only goaltender on this top ten list. Um, he is definitely a guy. He is definitely an interesting story, folks. I mean. 
It's amazing. He's had such a great season, but it's just the, the team in front of him has not. He's been the best player on the Buffalo Sabres, bar none. Um, you know, the record that he has really doesn't show how well he's played this year. Really, it he definitely deserves to better. Um, he needs to go somewhere where he can be a benefit. However, again, one thing to look at, though, is that he is 33 years old, so that's something that will be a bit of a concern. He's getting older now, but he wants to win a Stanley Cup, and there are de a bunch of teams that are definitely interested in his services. A team like the St. Louis Blues could def or have definitely talked about getting themselves a legitimate goaltender and getting Yaroslav Halak out of St. Louis. Halak is good. No, it's not that Halak has had a bad season. He's actually had a very good season. But they need a goaltender who can put not only push them through the playoffs, but give them the chance to win a cup. And Halak, after seeing the kind of tournament he had for Slovakia uh, this year in Sochi, you know, that that will definitely influence the decision even more. I can see a Halak, a Miller Halak trade. Obviously, more will be involved than just Halak for the Blues off to give up something else. But the Blues, they're looking. They, this, their time is coming, folks. They, they want to win a cup, and this is the way they're going to do it. They need goaltending. They need a legitimate goaltender who can get them through the playoffs. And then finally, Steve D David Leguana, the Nashville Predators, former second overall pick, never really lived up to his draft status. He's a solid player, and he's had a good season. Actually, he's actually had a very good season. He's a player with a good potential, good skill. Um, so, you know, there'll be, I, th I think a bunch of teams would definitely be interested in him. Maybe a team like the Detroit Red Wings, who could definitely use a, you know, a second line center st with Stephen Weiss not benefiting for them. Stephen Weiss has not had a good season at all. He has been a huge disappointment, has pretty much been demoted to, to third line center. So in that case, they kind of need to now explore options and look at a possible second-line center. Um, <laughs> and I think David Leguan could be the guy, you know. Um, he definitely has the potential. And at Detroit, they're going to need to make a playoff push, so maybe a team like Detroit will go after him. I'm sure some other teams are going to be interested as well. Um, but it's definitely, I think he'll only go somewhere there go to a team that's making a playoff push. That's my opinion. Um, you know. And one team, you know, we haven't really talked too much about that could be the dark horse in all this, folks, the New Jersey Devils. Um, they, they're, not on, they're not on any of these rumor lists to get these any of these players. However, you know, they are also trying to make a playoff push, folks. Um, and... And you know they're gonna definitely try. They're gonna they they're hoping that they can be buyers at the deadline. But I could see a guy like David Leguan fit, fitting into their system. But they could be the dark horse in any of these players. You know they they Lou Lamorello does when he does his job. He does it in in complete silence. He's like a ninja out there. Um, he he doesn't want any when he he keeps his stuff a secret. He is good at keeping secrets. And he, he does not like to let people know when the Devils are making a big splash. It was a big shock when Ilya, when they got Ilya Kovalchuk. Um, it definitely unexpected. So you could expect that the Devils will try to make a push for an unexpected move. I'm sure the Philadelphia Flyers will be another team looking up at some of these players. Um, but there are also some honorable mentions for me, even though they're not on the top ten. Dan Girardi, probably the biggest one of all. Dan Girardi of the New York Rangers. Again, pretty much the same kind of player as Andrew McDonald. A good puck-moving, shut-down defenseman, one of the top shot blockers in the league. He's found his game in the recent stages of the season. He had not had a good season leading up to the second half of the year. Um, he really started to pick up his game aim in the stadium series games, really. <coughs> so, <coughs> it'll be interesting to see where it where Dan Girardi lands if he gets traded. Anaheim Ducks, a lot of people are saying that they could be the most likely destination for him. Um, and that's the really the top free 
trade bait player that they're looking at. That's, that's Anaheim's top need for sure, a shutdown defenseman. Uh, Chicago Blackhawks, you know, they're another team that could really use something. They're definitely going to try to get something. They need a second-line center. That's been a need that they've needed to fill all year long. So actually, they could maybe take a look at a guy like Sam Gagne or Steve Ott or even David Leguan. So um, there are definitely some other players that could be b trade bait. Uh, Michael Neuvert is a player who could definitely be traded from the Washington Capitals. Um, there's definitely some teams that need goaltending. Um, Neuvert is not the best goaltender, obviously, but he'll give you something to work with, at least. Um, so we'll see how that works out. <coughs> um... Um, so, um, and then a guy who, you know, we has, has been talked about in the past is Jonas Hiller. Um, Bob Murray pretty much made it clear that Hiller isn't going anywhere, but that, but, you know, that things can change at any point. He had a fantastic tournament in Sochi, even though Switzerland did not finish where they would have liked to. They were upset by the Latvians, but... You know, Hiller, if he does get traded or if he doesn't get re-signed, could be a valuable asset for any team, really, that's looking at him, you know. Well, so we'll see what happens there. And, there, yeah, and then there again, there are just so many guys out there this year. This is going to be a good trade deadline. I can feel it. I can really feel it. I have a feeling we're going to see some top players being moved. And another guy, again, one more guy I'm going to talk about um, before I wrap this video up. Um, one more guy that really hasn't been talked about all too much, Yarmir Yager. Um, <coughs> Yarmir Yager, though he hasn't been talked about much and there really haven't been too many trade rumors involving him, you know, the Devils, they're not in a playoff position, and Yager has said it himself. He wants to win another Stanley Cup before he calls it a career. So... Um, you know, if the, so in my personal opinion, if the Devils are not in a playoff position by the time March 5th rolls around, Yager might ask to be traded, you know, and Yager wants to go to a top team that has the potential to win a Stanley Cup. And there are definitely a bunch of teams that could use a veteran vo voice and veteran presence in the locker room. <laughs> locker room. I think maybe a team most you know, a team like the St. Louis Blues, who have never won a cup before and are looking to do so, the St. Louis Blues should definitely take a look at Yager. Maybe the Chicago Blackhawks as well. Um, Anaheim Ducks could take a look at him, although they already have a veteran in Teemu Solani. What's the, what's, there's nothing wrong with having two, you know? There's nothing wrong with having two 40-plus-year-olds, 40 especially if they're still playing well. Yager has had a fantastic season. To everyone's surprise, he is the leading scorer of the New Jersey Devils this year. And in a lot of cases, that shouldn't be. That tells you that how bad your team really is offensively. Um, <coughs> but to this day, Yager's still so strong with the puck. It's so hard to knock him off the puck. But again, he wants to win a cup. And, you know, there are so those top teams out west could definitely look at him. All these years, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of surprised the Pittsburgh Penguins haven't looked into getting Yager back. Um, you know, that would be interesting to see him going back to Pittsburgh and playing on the right wing with Crosby and Kunitz. Um, that would definitely be interesting to see. Um <laughs> You know, and, and there are definitely a bunch of teams that can use his services now, now more than ever. So we'll see. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting trade deadline this year. You know, if Yager does get dealt, um, I think of the, the Detroit Red Wings, another team that might try to go after Yager. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, ooh. Actually, no, there is one other player I almost forgot to mention. Another player on the New Jersey Devils, another 40-year-old, actually. Marty Brodeur. 
Wait, through my whole life, I never thought I'd see, could imagine Brodeur wearing another uniform in the National Hockey League. Um, but that time, it looks like that that's exactly what could happen, potentially, as Brodeur has said that he is open to being traded. Um, and there are teams that are looking for a veteran goaltender who can still play the game. Marty Brodeur will, more, will definitely go down as the greatest goaltender of all time. Is he the same player that he was back then? Absolutely not. But there are teams that could use his wisdom. Um, and for teams that have goaltenders, for teams that have goaltenders that are young and need a veteran voice as their backup, Brodor could fill that role. Or you could slot Brodor in as a starter, possibly. I think, you know, I bought maybe a team. I know the Chicago Blackhawks had shown interest in him at one point, the Washington Capitals as well. Um, but, you know, I could see a team maybe like the Boston Bruins going out and maybe getting going for a guy like Brodor. Brodor. They don't really have a legitimate backup goaltender. Chad Johnson is their backup goaltender, and he's really not that great. But Brodor is a guy who could relieve Tuka Rask of some games, as you know, the Bruins look will most definitely make the playoffs, and they want Rask to, to be ready for the playoffs for sure. Brodor could relieve him of some games, so maybe Brodor going up to Boston could be make, make some sense. Or you know, there you know there are definitely some other teams you know who need backup goaltenders. You know the San Jose Sharks are a team that could look at a backup goaltender. You know if they they feel that Alex Stalock needs some more work. You know I mean I don't think he does. I think he's played well, um, but still that's just a possibility. Um, there's definitely a lot of options out there. There are a lot of teams who need goaltenders now. So, we'll see as the trade deadline looms closer, folks. And with that being said, that'll do it for episode 110 of Hockey on the Spot. Sorry this episode was a little longer. had a, quite a lot to talk about today. Um, again, tr and season begins again today. Carolina Hurricanes, Buffalo Sabres in Buffalo. Um, that is an NHL Network broadcast. It's a makeup game. That was originally postponed because of snowstorms. So be sure to catch that game, folks. And it's going to be a good one for sure, um, as the Hurricanes definitely look are looking to make a playoff push. Um, push. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Um, and, and actually, Cam Ward is another guy who could possibly get dealt at the deadline, but we'll see. That's just minor. That's just some minor talking, so... Not even going to bother. I don't even know what teams would be interested in him. But anyway, that's going to do it, folks, for episode 110. For our next episode, the next episode will not be until Wednesday. Wednesday, I'm going to do a special trade deadline edition of Hockey on the Spot. That will probably be one of my longer episodes for sure. Um, there will definitely be a lot to talk about on that day. So join me again next week. When episode 111 of Hockey on the Spot, uh, it will be the trade deadline edition of Hockey on the Spot. So until then, this has been Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Barenfeld. I'm Brandon Barenfeld. I will see you guys again next week. Thank you and have a great day.